Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. State police find an explosive device during a raid in Pecatonica. It was discovered by officers searching a marijuana growing operation. State and local leaders take part in an educational workshop. The project first rate event focuses on public construction. And McChesney Parks awarded more than a half million dollars from the state. A village leader tells us how the park grant will be spent. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Investigators released more details about the shooting that killed a Chicago police officer last night. The 18-year-old suspect had previously been taken into custody and charged with a crime. The officer has been identified as 32-year-old Andres Vasquez Lasso, who had been with the department for five years. He was shot several times on the city's southwest side while responding to a call of a man chasing a woman with a gun. Vasquez Lasso started chasing the 18-year-old suspect and shots were exchanged between the offender and the officer. The suspect was shot in the head and taken to the hospital in critical condition. In an incident last summer, the 18-year-old and two others were arrested after running from a vehicle that was believed to be involved in a shooting. The state's attorney's office felony review rejected charges against the 18-year-old and a misdemeanor charge against him for resisting arrest was later dropped. A Pecatonica man's arrested after police say they found a pipe bomb at his house. 36-year-old David Vowles is charged with possession of an explosive device, manufacture and delivery of cannabis between 30 and 500 grams, and production of cannabis plants. Wednesday morning, Illinois State Police, SWAT, and the Winnebago County Bomb Squad raided a marijuana growing operation on Valley View Drive. Officers searched the house and say they found nine cannabis plants, a workstation in the garage with cannabis trimmings, baggies, a scale, and a pipe bomb. ATF agents were called to the home to take custody of the pipe bomb. They say it, quote, had all the necessary components to detonate. Vowels was taken to Winnebago County Jail. Police arrest two Rockford teenagers on various drug and weapons charges. Wednesday evening, officers conducted a traffic stop on Ridge Avenue. 19-year-old Emmanuel Albert and 19-year-old Terrence Green were inside the car. Police discovered Albert was wanted on an outstanding warrant and say he also had ecstasy pills on him. Officers also say they recovered two loaded guns, one with an extended magazine and the other reported stolen from Racine, Wisconsin. Albert is charged with unlawful use of a weapon by a felon and possession of a controlled substance. Green faces possession of a stolen firearm and aggravated unlawful use of a weapon charges. The men are both in the Winnebago County Jail. A Loves Park woman's arrested after driving a car into a house. Wednesday evening, first responders were called to the intersection of Harlem and Cadet Roads to reports of a silver Buick that struck a house. According to investigators, the driver of that car, 42-year-old Sarah Astasian, was driving eastbound on Harlem Road when she left the road, hit a curb, drove through a fence before striking a gas line and a house. Astasian and the passenger were not hurt. However, the 42-year-old was arrested and charged with driving with a suspended license, failure to reduce speed to avoid an accident, possession of drug paraphernalia and various other charges. She was taken to the Winnebago County Jail. Funeral and visitation arrangements are now set for the Rockford Alderman who recently died. A visitation for Tuffy Quinones will be held this Friday from 4 to 7 at Fitzgerald Funeral Home on Mulford Road. A funeral mass is planned for Saturday. That will be at 10 in the morning at St. Bridget Catholic Church in Loves Park. Quinones died after suffering a stroke last week. He was first elected to the seat in 2017. Before that, he served on the Winnebago County Board. He also founded the Mexican Business Association. The 76-year-old was passionate about investing in the Broadway area and was a proud veteran who embraced his Hispanic heritage. Illinois' controller and attorney general spend the day in the Forest City. They were here to talk about construction projects. Project First Rate hosted an all-day educational workshop covering topics related to public construction. The event took place at MSC Suites in downtown Rockford. Nearly 100 local government leaders, elected officials, and construction industry professionals took part. The group got the most up-to-date information about laws, regulations, and other policies when it comes to projects that use taxpayer money. I've been up here before, and, um, and, and so whenever invited to talk on this topic, I think it's an important one to talk about and to educate people about, educate uh, 
uh, governments who contract uh, about abiding by the, by the law in the interest, again, of protecting workers and protecting law-abiding contractors. According to Project First Rate, a small mistake by contractors or government leaders can cost taxpayers thousands of dollars. McChesney Park is getting half a million dollars from the state of Illinois to shore up a local park. Our Nikal Delgado talked with the mayor about the plans today. Nikal, what'd you find out? Eric Mimi, the, the big idea behind this project is to get people out of the flood zones along the river. Part of the money is going towards a involuntary voluntary acquisition program to relocate those people along Shore Drive area and turn it into more green space. They love the boating, they, they love the ramps, uh, they love what we have out there. Uh, when you can expand it and, and make it a better product, they're all for it. Riverfront property along Shore Drive in McChesney Park is getting a big makeover. Mayor Steve Johnson says the $500,000 grant will help make the waterfront more safe and accessible. This allows us to help beautify the, the park, McChesney Park, in that way too for the, for the public. We want to make sure it ensures the safety and the, uh, able to actually have people enjoy the waterfront. Mayor Johnson tells me this has been a long process. The village has already acquired 161 properties that are prone to flood along the river, and more are expected to be demolished. Part of the grant will go to help those people relocate. Helping people get out of flood-prone areas, but you're also developing a park system, parkway program. The plan is to create a park atmosphere, which will include fishing piers, a walking path with benches and more parking. Mayor Johnson says he is excited to see this project come to life. Now we're getting up to the point where we can actually get our project going with the, the boat, line, boat to, uh, launch and then the park area connected together, which is it's a win-win for the public. Mayor Johnson says this is a two-year project, and while there's still much to do, they expect to get started by the summer. Eric, Mimi? All right, thanks, Nikel. Four astronauts are on their way to the International Space Station. They're on board a SpaceX Dragon capsule that lifted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida today. The crew includes two Americans, a Russian cosmonaut, and a space flyer from the United Arab Emirates. Sultan El Niyadi is only the second person from United Arab Emirates to go into space. The crew's due at the space station tomorrow. They'll be replacing a crew that's been there since October. The new crew will oversee more than 200 science and tech projects on the orbiting station. Congress is cracking down on fentanyl, which lawmakers warn is now a leading cause of death for Americans 18 to 45. Coming up, Senate Republicans introduce a bill that would stop many of those substances from becoming street legal. Not quite as warm as what it was yesterday, but our trend for the above average warmth continues. Comes to an end briefly tomorrow as we could see some rain and even a few snow showers timing those out for you in your most trusted forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lepper, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Congress is cracking down on fentanyl. Following multiple hearings on the deadly drug, Senate Republicans introduced a bill to make the DEA's temporary controls on illicit fentanyl-related substances permanent. The Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor shows us not all lawmakers are sold. Losing Logan was like a bomb going off in the middle of our family. Erin Rockwall lost her 19-year-old son to fentanyl poisoning, which she warned is now a leading cause of death for Americans 18 to 45. And the kids are getting younger. And we must save them because they must have a future. Both House and Senate committees took up the country's fentanyl crisis this week. Enough is enough. South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham reintroduced a bill that would make the DEA's temporary controls on illicit fentanyl-related substances permanent a move Attorney General Merrick Garland supports. All fentanyl-related um, um, drugs should be scheduled These permanently. Support mandatory. And Rockwall agrees, saying class-wide scheduling would deter new versions of the deadly substance. How can you focus on theoretical rights of criminals over the rights of our children? But Texas Democrat Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee argued the bill could make racial disparities in the prison system worse instead of finding ways to stop drug addiction. We cannot incarcerate our way out of this. 
While efforts continue in Congress to fight the fentanyl crisis at the federal level, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is asking the rest of the world to help. No country can tackle this problem alone. At the G20 conference Thursday, Blinken said countries can work together to disrupt supply chains and take down transnational criminal groups. This is a law enforcement and security issue, but it's fundamentally a public health issue and an increasingly global one. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. After a sunny, warm day yesterday, it felt more winter-like out there today with those cloudy skies and highs in the 30s. Speaking of more winter-like, coming up, Candace shows us a potential snowstorm headed toward northern Illinois. That's next. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, things have been a little on the cloudy side out there. We take a live look at our SkyTrack camera in downtown Beloit here this evening. Our skies, they will stay mostly cloudy as we go through this evening, but we are going to stay dry. 39 our temperature in Freeport, Rockford, 38 in Rochelle. Not much of a wind out there, so wind chill numbers are not too much of a concern here for us this evening. This all part of our next storm system that will impact us tomorrow afternoon. It's just those impacts, at least the higher ones could actually settle a little more to our south and southeast. That storm system bringing severe weather ongoing now. Numerous severe thunderstorm warnings southwest of Dallas to the east of Dallas. You've got tornado warnings down across Texas. This will continue to work to the east as that moisture lifts up through the mid and upper Mississippi River Valley. Temperatures here as we go through the night will stay in those low 30s. Winds will turn a little more to our east and northeast during that time. They'll start to pick up here as we go throughout the morning and afternoon noon tomorrow, so it does get a little windy tomorrow. First half of our Friday is going to be dry, and for some, majority of Friday could actually be dry. That low pressure system tracking a little further to the south. Notice future cast even keeps this completely out of the area during that time. I think we could take the northern extent of this and kind of shift it a little more to the northwest. I think we are going to see some lighter rain showers initially as we get closer to about noon tomorrow. And for some, that'll mix in and change over to some snow. But right now, that best area for that appears to be to our east and southeast. Low pressure pulls further away. We'll see some sunshine temperatures back into the 40s for Saturday. But we are likely going to see some rain showers then move in once we get into late Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening. Winter storm watches have been issued. Nothing for the immediate area. All of this towards Chicago south and east across northwest Indiana as that low pressure system has tracked a little further to the south. So now moving across parts of southern Missouri, far southern Illinois, Indiana, and then out through Ohio once we get into Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. So with that, that does kind of take that heaviest snow and places it to the southeast. So uh, areas from Chicago and then points to the southwest of there. Kind of looking at this as we take it into Friday afternoon, a couple of lighter showers moving in. Temperatures during this time are going to stay above freezing. Um, so if we were to see any light snowfall, it would not really stick to the roadways more than likely, and the heavier banding snow is going to stay out of the area. Notice though a sharp cutoff. So the further west I think you get a Rockford and north, Probably not going to see any precipitation at all during that time. There is still the possibility for that to kind of shift a little back to the north. There is that small possibility, but the overall trend that we've had the last day, day and a half is for that to kind of work a little further to the south. So a sharp cutoff here as far as where we see snow to where we don't see any snow from, uh, let's say from Belvedere to Rockford, maybe down through Rochelle and then to the east, an inch, maybe Maybe at most two inches, if that heavier accumulations then lying a little further to the east and then to the southeast. Winds will be picking up, so it is going to get windy for the afternoon tomorrow. Higher gusts located across parts of DeKalb County and then out through Kane County too. 45 on Saturday, 46 on Sunday. Sunday night into Monday could have a couple rumbles of thunder with those rain showers going in to Monday afternoon. Thank you, Candace. Scott's in next with sports. He has good news from Normal, where the Byron girls basketball team took the court for the state tournament. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Well, the Byron girls basketball season is going the distance. The Lady Tigers will play on Saturday and they'll be playing for a state championship. This afternoon, they took the court at Illinois State University for a Class 2A semifinal against the fourth-ranked team in the state, Chicago Noble Prep. First half action, Byron senior Britton Belskis launches a three and sinks the three. 
And freshman Malia Morton will go in strong. She scores despite the contact. Tigers came up big in the second quarter, outscoring Butler 12-2. They go inside Ava Colchin, who gets the bounce. Colchin scored 17 points. On the fast break, another freshman, Macy Groherring, scores. She had 10 points in the game. It was a balanced attack for Byron. Carson Belskis going to knock down a three-pointer. Byron won by 12 over Butler, 55-43. Reagan Holgate caught up with the Tigers following the win. I didn't know if we'd be in this position. I, I thought that Butler team was outstanding on film. Uh, they have probably one of the best players in 2A basketball. Um, I felt like if we could handle their pressure and get a few baskets, we'd be able to you know, do our defensive game plan. But um, I'm just happy for the kids. Um, i really pleased at our community. I, I think we broke over into the other section and filled ours up. So um, outstanding representation from the Byron community and, and couldn't be happier that we could play on Saturday. When you really like slow down, then you finally like find your rhythm, and then when you find your rhythm, we were like kind of in it, and then that's when we knew we got this. And I couldn't ask for a better way to go out. You know, losing last year in the sectional final against Winnebago, I mean, they were a great team, but to be here my senior year along with all these best, like my best friends, is a way to go out. It sure is. Now Byron's going to play in the championship game Saturday at 12:45 p.m. against either Quincy Notre Dame or Brees Modern Day. That game's at halftime with Modern Day leading 29 to 23. In the Class 1A semifinals earlier, number one Galena was upset by O'Callville 49 to 31. That's Forge. We'll be right back. I realize I'm probably in the minority, but I was kind of hoping we would <laughs> get some significant snowfall here tomorrow. Well, I think there's still people who, you know, want to have the snow because we really haven't had a whole lot no. this winter. We didn't, we but we got a lot of rain too. So you we know, have if gotten a if lot. Part of, rain. of the concern for the snow is yeah. getting the soil ready for farming season. Mm -hmm. We did make up for it in the rainfall. I'm talking part, about so. playing in the snow. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? You know, my my middle one woke me up this morning. She goes, "Are we having school tomorrow?" I heard we're supposed to get eight inches of snow. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa!" Well, at least <laughs> she knows quite. who to ask. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's true. Now, you know, we've got a couple of snow showers. There'll be some minor accumulations, mostly east and southeast, though. But I think some of that heavier snowfall is going to kind of bypass us. Still, some time for that low to track a little to the north, but uh, right now it looks to stay to the south. 37 for tomorrow with the wind, 40s for the weekend. All right, thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.